uh, see funds uh, as nationalist, right? They have nation to promote, they have a fund, they have fund activism. Uh, we could see their political stance in uh, Black Life Matter and anti-Trump campaign just recently. And um, uh, this neo-nationality is again explains us who, are, who funds are on the one hand, but again stigmatize them and marginalize their, um, their position. Finally, a definition of funds go to the market studies, right? Uh, I think it's a keynote uh, that was mentioned. Uh, they're consumers, but they're also prosumers. They both produce and consume. They're basically uh, economic uh, agents, and, and which is important. And uh, with Professor Atmatgen, we have the study of fund entrepreneurs, somebody who uh, comes from highly funded, uh, but also engaged in some kind of business, and uh, what to say, combines business and pleasure in one place. So again, on the one hand, it's very helpful, it's interesting, it's economic one. On the other hand, they often describe like exaggerated consumers, uh, obsessed one, cultural dopes, and we see the stigmatization uh, going through culture, uh, through definition of funds, something that we'd like to avoid, something we'd like to distance ourselves. And uh, our uh, suggestions is go is to go to um, second question, like how does fundam drive the global spread of value? Uh, we go to the institutional entrepreneurship. It's a sociological theory. And uh, basically, it says that actors in the institutional work can actually create new institutions or we can transform the existing ones. So if we look at funds as institutional entrepreneurs, we can actually uh, suggest a new definition of uh, or the new definition of uh, who are the funds and explain how do we work, what actually mechanisms that move higher uh, in the global uh, area. Um, so we got just three examples of uh, three cases of transformation and creative of new uh, institution. First, we can see how fandoms in this specific festival uh, challenged uh, existing institution. When I talk about existing institutions, of course, I talk about institution of work and institution of leisure. Uh, fandom that doesn't fit neither in work, neither in leisure, basically creates some in-between uh, we can even say hybrid uh, institution, right? Something that doesn't fit well into and therefore uh, transforms and challenges the existing ones. On the right picture, for example, you can see uh, the manager of uh, Opeo School who organized this uh, festival. She's a school teacher uh, in the day and she's managing a K pop school at evening. So you can see how this work and leisure uh, live together peacefully. And on the left picture, you can see my favorite uh, uh, Hilo entrepreneurship, uh, our student, Nove, who basically combines her love to Korea with work. And she says, it's neither work, it's neither leisure. It's something that I can do both uh, from my love to Korea, uh, promoting Korea. And uh, basically, she's unofficial ambassador of Korean culture in Israel, playing Gayagam. Uh, with her, you see her Korean student who learns how to play Korean traditional music from an Israeli teacher. Combine how we transform these binaries that are supposed to be very clear, right? Either we work or either we rest, but here you can see them together. And it's one thing about institutional work that is happening uh, in, in front of our eyes. The second uh, mechanism that we'd like to discuss mm -hmm. is uh, creating the new institution. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's uh, we choose festival uh, with. Um, uh, let's say carnival lab, right? We change their clothes, we put handbooks, uh, we use uh, open uh, air market as a place to promote uh, uh, Hallelu, uh, we dance K pop, uh, K -pop uh, uh, we do K pop covers, and of course, it's not specific to Israel. What's beautiful about it, we can see it uh, all over the world, uh, how this uh, uh, alternative institution emerges and allows. Uh, uh, how you uh, spread, how you uh, flow. Um, it, again, I, I'd like to emphasize, it's not an official institution, it's something like mushroom here, there, once a year, sometimes, very much carnival-like, festival-like, but uh, 
uh, gives a possibility for alternative institution to emerge. Uh, our final uh, finding, and again, it's very initial findings to discuss here, is that of translation. I think Stephanie's paper uh, addressed it very well. But unlike, uh, in, in, unlike industry translation, that you know, translate, uh, for example, K-pop soft to Japanese, here we see fandom translating K-pop to enlarge their audience to uh, make space for, as we said, alternative institution or challenging the existing mm -hmm. institutions. So, for example, on the left, you can see a kosher Korean food, which is, of course, oxymoron. There is not such a thing as a kosher Korean food. But to address this uh, audience and enlarge it of people who can mm -hmm. keep uh, Jewish uh, laws of food, they basically translated Korean food in the local context. On the right, you can see a Korean who um, translates the Jewish holy text to Korean and sells to uh, K pop fans. Uh, basically, there is a remarriage of religion into fandom, back to the, into the fandom, and uh, it's something that again enlarge the audience, make it uh, make space for uh, alternative institution to emerge. So to conclude, uh, again we suggest two things, and it's more let's say theoretical uh, work that we'd like to do to contribute to fandom studies and not only to higher studies in Israel or higher studies in general. First, we suggest uh, that fans are not just uh, religious, uh, religious like uh, fanatics, not just uh, um, uh, nationalist like, yes, ambassadors like. And they're not just uh, prosumers and even not only K entrepreneurs. They are also institutional entrepreneurs. They actually deal with institution, with existing one and alternative ones. Uh, they transform the existing uh, institution of work leisure binary. They build uh, alternative fandom of festival institution. And finally, they use translation uh, as an institutionalization process uh, to enlarge their, their uh, audience. Uh, these are three mechanisms we see um, in institutional process uh, that hopefully contribute to our two questions. Who are the, who are the funds and how they uh, make Highland Global? Thank you very much.